In this video, we're going to discuss the transcriptional regulation of the lactose operon. The lac operon is a bacterial gene that allows bacterium to metabolize the sugar lactose. Lactose is a disaccharide of galactose and glucose. It's a beta galactoside because it's a beta linkage between the number one carbon of galactose to the number four carbon of glucose. In order to digest and utilize these sugars for energy, bacterium and other organisms need other organisms need to break this beta linkage. They do so with an enzyme called beta galactosidase. The bacterial enzyme is encoded by a uh, gene, uh, sorry, by an open reading frame referred to as LACZ. The operon is a typical gene with a promoter and a transcription unit, as you've should be able to all be able to draw. The um, RNA that is made contains three open reading frames, the LAC-Z open reading frame, the LAC-Y, and LAC-A open reading frames. We are not going to talk about any of these open reading frames. Instead, we're going to talk about the transcriptional regulation uh, and the activity that occurs at the promoter. So I've expanded the promoter here <coughs> and have now I'm going to the, the promoter, as you are all aware, is the binding site for the polymerase. And here is the bacterial polymerase with sigma, sigma factor attached. Sigma factor is required for bacterial RNA polymerases to bind to and recognize uh, promoter sequences. The other sequence that's relevant here is a sequence called an operator. The operator overlaps the promoter and uh, transcription start here. And the operator is the binding site for a protein that is made by another gene, a protein that is a repressor protein. And this repressor protein has the ability, under appropriate conditions, to bind to the operator. And when bound to the operator, it prevents binding of the polymerase to the polymerase binding site. Lactose here, I'm going to, uh, uh, we're going to show in this video uh, as just an, a, a purple ball with an L. That represents lactose, or in the cell it's converted to allolactose, and that's the actual molecule used. But we're just going to refer to it as lactose, as do most textbooks. So this is where we were. A in a cell that is exposed to lactose, there's lots of lactose inside the cell. And lactose, uh, the repressor protein, has binding sites for lactose. And when lactose is bound, there is an allosteric change. It changes shape and, uh, and is no longer able to bind to the repressor. Sorry, it is no longer able to bind to the operator. So the repressor, when bound to lactose, is no longer able to bind the operator, uh, making the polymerase binding site, the promoter, available for the RNA polymerase. And then the polymerase can initiate transcription. Okay. Uh, the repressor protein is made by another gene and is present all of the time. There's another element that's relevant as well. This is element is upstream of the promoter. It is adjacent to the promoter. It is uh, a DNA sequence that is a binding site for a cyclic AMP um, receptor binding protein. That cyclic AMP receptor protein is going to be mm, identified by this gray cross. And cyclic AMP is going to be represented with uh, black squares. Cyclic AMP is a form of adenosine monophosphate that has been cyclized uh, where the single phosphate has a phosphodiester linkage to both the 5' prime and the 3' prime carbon. Cyclic AMP levels are high in cells that uh, are low in energy, that don't have glucose available, for example. Well, when glucose levels are low, uh, the cells are unable to make lots of ATP, and the ATP, uh, the adenosine nucleoside, instead of being in the triphosphate form, is in the monophosphate form and is typically converted to cyclic AMP. So high levels of cyclic AMP represent conditions in the cell 
uh, where uh, energy is low, where glucose is typically not available. Okay, so we're going to ignore the repressor for the moment to talk about the activity of cyclic AMP. So in the condition where there is no glucose, cyclic AMP levels are high. When cyclic AMP levels are high, cyclic AMP is able to bind to the cyclic AMP receptor protein, and that complex now is able to bind to the CAMP-CRP binding site, the DNA uh, on the DNA. Binding of this complex to uh, the CRP binding site enhances the binding of RNA polymerase to the promoter. So under this, these conditions, uh, polymerase um, transcription initiation occurs more rapidly because binding of RNA polymerases to the promoter is more efficient. Okay, so that sort of lays the groundwork for understanding when the operon will, operon will be turned on and when the operon will be turned off. So let's start with one condition, uh, in which case cells are growing in the presence of glucose, but in the absence of lactose. So there's no lactose. Uh, in the absence of lactose, there's no reason to uh, express this gene. So in the absence of lactose, the repressor binds to the operator, and the binding of the repressor to the operator prevents the RNA polymerase from binding to the promoter. And as a result, the operon is off because it isn't transcribed. So that's fairly straightforward, I hope. Under condition two, imagine cells growing with both, with both glucose and lactose. So both glucose and lactose are present. Glucose is the preferred uh, carbon source. And when glucose is present, it's being metabolized through um, uh, glycolysis, and we'll be talking about that later this semester, generating lots of ATP, or at least sufficient amounts of ATP. So ATP levels are high, and that means that cyclic AMP levels are low. And lactose is present. So when lactose is present, lactose binds to the repressor, causes an allosteric change, so that the repressor is unable to bind to the operator and making the promoter available for binding by RNA polymerase and the gene can be transcribed uh, as RNA polymerase uh, initiates transcription. Okay, so in this case, the gene would be transcribed. The third condition we'll talk about is growing on lactose only in the absence of glucose. Under these conditions, lactose is present. However, there's no glucose. And in the absence of glucose, ATP levels will not be high. Instead, cyclic AMP levels will be high. High levels of cyclic AMP will bind to the cyclic AMP uh, receptor protein. So lactose binds to the, its repressor and causes a steric uh, change, an allosteric change, so that the repressor can no longer bind to the operator. Cyclic AMP binds to its receptor protein, which can now bind to the DNA binding site. Binding to the DNA binding site now enhances binding of RNA polymerase so that it occurs more efficiently, and the, the gene uh, transcription initiates, and the gene is expressed. Expression with the uh, cyclic AMP CRP bound to the, its binding site can enhance transcription 50-fold higher than if that complex were not present. So th this operon, in fact, has the ability to be off when the, when the uh, repressor is bound to the operator, on when there is lactose present, uh, or on at higher levels when glucose is not present and um, cyclic AMP levels are high. So I encourage you to review that and make sure you understand how this gene is regulated and to look at the TRIP operon to see how uh, tryptophan is similar at regulation of the TRIP operon is both similar and different than regulation of the lactose operon.